designs here. And today I got another beautiful tutorial for you guys. Um, it's going to be, I know, uh, you know, I think Flow Graphics did one, or uh, if you guys know who Flow is. On basically geometrical shapes <clears throat> in like 2D type stuff. Um, trying to find a quick, uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of like an, I'll use that. Agonies, I think. Yeah, agonies. <clears throat> yeah, so what we have here, excuse me, is of course you guys have seen these on some of the banners I've been doing a lot lately. And what they are, I mean, very simple. Um, these are diamonds uh, for people that don't know. Uh, and what they are is they almost look like 3D shapes, but in a in, in Photoshop. And they're, uh, it's a geometrical thing, exactly like the logo. You're making a 3D pop-out logo in a 2D raster program. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm going to kind of show you guys how to get the effect that I get. So um, sit back, try to, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, do this. And, you know, if you have any questions, of course, leave them all directly in the comments. And, of course... Uh, just uh, keep up with the best you possibly can because uh, this is a very tough tutorial for a lot of people that are still getting into the whole 2D thing. So um, it's a little bit more advanced, but, you know, it, it's not too advanced to the point where, you know, people that are beginners can't do this. You guys easily can. It's just going to look a little different sometimes. And uh, practice is really a big thing here. Um, okay, so basically what we're going to start off is I always start off with one main cluster. Um, and, you know, it's, it's some one shape. So in this case, just because it's a tutorial, I'm going to be doing a triangle. Um, reason being is because there, it's only three instead of eight or whatever. You can use any shape, any geometrical shape, period. You can use it. You're going to just draw it out with your pen tool, of course. And you're going to want to have, if you're working on a red bat, or a, you know, me, I'm using a, a blue-ish teal type thing in the background. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to use an offset, uh, you know, same type of color. Uh, I wouldn't do too bright, wouldn't do too dark. I'd kind of just be in the middle and just kind of fill that, of course, a new layer. And you're just going to hit OK. Now we have our free layer of uh, our triangle. And we're going to zoom in here. The reason I'm going to zoom in is because we're going to do the geometrical part of it. Now, if you guys watched the prior video or some, I think it was the prior video, uh, this is just very simple, basic uh, you know, geometrical uh, design. And what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to have to base this off of three different um, lights. So we're going to have our light, and I'm sorry, I'm going to rotate this. I'm completely sorry, just to make give it a little bit more of a you know, make, get you guys to comprehend the whole thing a little bit better. Um, we're going to have our light. So if our light comes from the top, uh, 90 degree angle, we're going to make this cut. Uh, we're going to make a cut like that. And we're going to fill it with almost like a light source. So if we have this color, you know, of course, you can use your eyedropper. And we're going to just move it up to a lighter one. And we're going to hit OK. Of course, we're using clipping masks here. Very simple stuff. And we're going to create a new one below. And we're going to make this bottom part right here. We're going to make a cut right here. I'm going to show you. Make a cut like that. Cut, 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 and here. And we're going to make this bottom area, we're going to make it a darker color than the main color. So we're going to go right here. And it's going to give us, if we zoom out, a look of a 3D shape. And that is exactly what we want. Now, of course, you're going to have to use different types of colors. And, of course, you guys can do, and I'm sorry I keep saying of course so much, you can use the bevel and emboss uh, thing with the shape um, just like I did in the prior video with uh, you know using your logo like that completely uh, acceptable you can do that if it helps you uh, but once you kind of get advanced with this it by eye is usually the best thing you could possibly do because it adds a little bit more of that um, human air almost like of you know it, it kind of looks weird but at the same time it looks cool so now that we have our main shape I'm going to create a cluster that goes completely around it. Now, as a cluster, you want to give the, you know, almost like 
this shape is the biggest one in the whole cluster. So no matter what you do, is you're just going to want to duplicate. And if I were you, I would start off rotating 100%, uh, you know, ways kind of like this. You don't want to have two the same colors and, you know, just shrink them. You know, uh, put it kind of close to the edge. And this is all by eye. Uh, you don't need to line them up all 100%, you know, perfectly lined up. Uh, the, the, uh, the, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is making it look like it, it's literally random is a good thing. You don't want to make it look like it's perfect the whole time, because uh, then it'll kind of give the effect of it a pattern, and you don't want that. You kind of want a, you know, an effect more, more or less of it being randomized. So, very good thing for you to do that. And of course, uh, you're going to want to add some really small ones. And I'm doing this, and these are just completely random. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of uh, randomly spinning, you know, spinning them. And this is where your control or command T is going to, you know, really help you here. Uh, and we're just going to keep duplicating the big layer and kind of just doing something cool around here. And you're going to want to cover each and every side, um, I will say. You, you do want to kind of make it balanced, but at the same time have it a little unbalanced as well. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is, is a lot of people think that design is all 100% what, you know, it's symmetrical. And most of it is not. It's not symmetrical at all. Um, and that's the whole cool part about this is you don't want this to be symmetrical, so... Kind of just doing cool ideas here, and we're just spinning, doing some cool stuff, and that's really all you need to do. I mean, you can add way more. Like for instance, I like to add little ones around all over the place, just because it kind of gives just that flair of like, oh, that's kind of cool type thing. And that's basically what I'll do. So once you're done with that, you're gonna want to merge your layer, all of them together. Um, you can duplicate them and then merge that one and, you know, kind of have like a backup just in case, like kind of like something like this here, I'll show you. Um, click on all these command J merge layers and then you have your backup layers and you kind of just group these. And then you now can, you know, if you unselect that one, you still have your group just in case so you can revert to the original. I would recommend it just in case, but for this tutorial, it's up to you. Um, so for instance, say we're going to be putting... Uh, let's zoom out here. Say we're putting a text right on top of this one. What we're going to want to do is we're going to duplicate this, transform, flip this vertically maybe, and kind of, or, you know, you really kind of just feel it out. I mean, whatever kind of looks cool to you, 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 you know, merge them together in a way. And, you know, if it looks cool, it looks cool. And then, you know, uh, I like that. So that is going to be our main focal point. Um, for people I don't know. So like say, uh, it, a really good way for me to explain it is say here, th this is where your text is going to be. So we'll put like a huge little or big text thing right here. And say here's going to be where your text is going to be or whatever, you know, you're trying to portray or if you just want this to be the medium book of it. So our text is going to be here. And what you're going to want to do here is you're going to duplicate this layer you're going to want to go filter, stylize, find edges. Now the filters, I will say, is something that you guys got to learn. These things are awesome and you got to just experiment with them. Do literally just sit in Photoshop and experiment with them. The things you can come up with are the coolest things in the world. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to find your edges, going to make these colors, what we're, you know, all these weird colors and stuff. Just hit command I and it's going to make it black. Then you're going to do is command uh, or control I for PCs. You're going to want to hit command alt U or control alt U for PCs. And you're going to want to make uh, just, you can click colorize or whatever, just pull your saturation all the way down. And you're going to make it all white. Now, to get the effect of the white uh, you know, outlines, you're just going to want to switch this to linear dodge. Switch it to about 50%. I usually do about 75 just because, you know, I really do want it to accent. And you can just merge this down. And this is what you have. So that is your cluster. So to get the effect of, you know, this being the main cluster and this to be your focal point, we're going to do some other stuff. We're going to duplicate the layer. We're going to put one up, you know, bottom left. 
Uh, we're going to make this one a little smaller. Put that in the bottom, or bottom right, bottom left. I'm sorry, I just completely failed there. Uh, and you know, you make smaller ones to really give it a good depth perception. Uh, you can do, you know, duplicate them. Give it, you know, give it almost like, you know, it, it's flying at you type thing. Um, you know, right here, you can do something like that. Uh, you know, randomly put them somewhere. You know, you can get real small with them and kind of just. position them in, in weird ways, and that's really kind of what you want to do. You want to make it kind of look like it's, uh, the depth of it really does work. That's, I guess, the best way to explain it. And um, I'm just doing this quickly. I'm kind of looking, you know, I'm following what I'm doing at the same time as I'm kind of just throwing things around. And this is exactly what I do. Um, and what you're going to want to do is make sure that you know that this is your you know, focal point layer, and you can just merge all the ones once you're done and move it behind. And these are all of your cool looking layers. Uh, you can add more, like, for instance, I kind of noticed that uh, this part is kind of lacking a little bit depth wise, so I might just put a really small one right here. I like that. That works a lot better. Um, and right up here, I want to put something real small right here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we can pull these below, merge these together. And, you know, once again, you can make a, a group of them instead. And, you know, you can revert if you want, but completely up to you. So after that, to get the effect that I get of, like, you know, this being the focal point, here's our text. Of course, you're going to want to add a drop shadow to your, all your text, kind of giving it like that effect that it's laying on top of it. And you're going to take this layer, which is your layer of all of these, you know, little clusters moving around. You're going to want to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now, this is 100% up to you. I usually use around two pixel blurs. Um, some people I know use one. And, uh, you know, two is just gives it a little bit more of that, you know, very, very you know, eye-opening type effect. Um, that's what I'd recommend, so use that. Uh, so if you're using, making this to use a background, uh, you know, I'm just going to do some effects here, you know. Uh, just can, some cool stuff that I do. Like, you know, I usually add a nice something cool like this. Hold on. Switch it to overlay, you know, kind of give it like that, that effect that there is something there. It's not just this weird background that, you know, adds some grunge all around here. You, know, you don't want to keep it so plain in the background. You want to give it, you know, some really cool looks <clears throat> and not just boringness, I guess. Um, you know, give it some texture. Sorry, I'm doing this. This is a lot of clicking. But yeah, it's very simple stuff. And uh, you can just kind of add this back here, switch to overlay again. You know, cool stuff like that. Give it that, that cool effect. Um, and another thing that I really would recommend is that almost, I mean, Evan Eckerd said it best. The One of the most used filters out there is clouds. So, uh, filters, render, clouds, you know, can add something, you know, add that to overlay. And that's really it. Um, sometimes it depends. I, I like to take this opacity down a little bit, uh, like a 60%, uh, just to give it a little bit more of a cool look. Once again, really emphasize this rather than that. Um, and that's basically, you know, what I uh, what I usually do with them. I I add some curves, of course, to the final product. Uh, you know, I add my own cool dual color type thing. So in this in this uh, situation, I would use probably a blue to a red, uh, probably something like here's like a blue. 
to like red. And you know, you just kind of move down to about 5%. And it kind of just gives it a cool look. But that is basically it, guys. Um, another thing, oh, I completely forgot, is to emphasize your light, I would, you know, take a really soft brush, make it, you know, however big you need to make it, uh, make a white, just a white light above it, and emphasize the light, that that light is there. And, you know, it gives it, you know, more of a perspective of what, you know, where the light source is and everything. And it just looks cool. So thank you guys so much for watching the tutorial. I really hope I helped you guys with this because this is something that, you know, a million people have been asking me, like, how the hell do you do this? You know, it's really cool. So here's your tools, guys. This is what it is. Uh, you don't have to make it look identical to mine. Uh, but, you know, completely up to you. <laughs> But uh, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I really hope I cleared up some questions for a lot of people. Uh, if you guys can, uh, like the video. But if not, it's completely understand. <laughs> and uh, of course, guys, I will come out. I have another speed art that I'm kind of keeping a secret on the DL. If you see me on Twitter, I'll post a little a few pictures here and there. But we're approaching 50,000 subscribers, guys, so you know what that means. So uh, thank you guys again, and I'm ready. I've been happy as hell with everything you guys have been giving me. So. Deuces. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the last video you guys saw. Please check out my Selfie. It has a million things you guys can buy for cheap. Um, there are my layer styles, stat, stock packs, templates you guys can use, brushes, patterns, everything possible that you want to buy of mine that I have personally made. You guys can buy them there. They are very cheap, and I always am putting out discounts for even free stuff. So check that out. Keep updated on that. And thank you guys all for being just part of me and being part of the Call, of Duty, Call Me Rated X army and the Rated Army. Thank you again, and uh, enjoy.